Hello and welcome to another edition of Mobile Monday, the video podcast from godasageek.com where we take a look at four mobile games and let you know whether they're worth buying. I'm God as a Geek's deputy editor Martin Baker and I'll be walking you through the four games this week. The first game that we're going to have a look at this week on Mobile Monday is Can You Escape? And if I go into the game, it is very similar to a couple of games that have been out kind of in this vein before where the whole point of the game is to escape from the level and uh, it's not it's not immediately obvious what you have to do in order to escape there's no clues or anything like that it's just a, a matter of tapping on different areas of the uh, of the of the world and hoping that you can figure it out basically so there's a series of puzzles i'm guessing that somewhere there'll be some colors that uh, that show me what to do there usually there's there's one place where it starts it all off. It's kind of like a uh, a ball rolling down a hill, just gathering moss as it's going down. There'll be there'll be something in one of these different scenarios or different situations that kind of starts the ball rolling. And if I can just find where everything starts, we'll be all good. Let's have a look. There's plenty. And one of the things as well is it doesn't really. Okay, so that's interactive. It doesn't really tell you where to start either there's no clues or anything like that so you just have to kind of tap everything it also doesn't tell you what is tappable so you don't even know what kind of things in the, in the world are interactive you just have to keep moving around and hoping that you find something soon that oh that's interactive so i've seen nothing with colors though yet oh the dartboard is there anything on the dartboard so the blue's in five, red four. Let's see if that's got something to do with it. Blue, red, green. Let's see. That wasn't there, where was it? Here. Nope, I can't see anything to do with that. You can see how difficult it can be. Oh, I've got, got something. i got an item that might be used somewhere. That's, there was a an eye on there let's put that in there we open that yet no i'm guessing we still need to find a a brown eye for the other side before we can open that uh that draw is there anything here nope see a lot of them are kind of decoys as well whether there won't even be anything to to move it'll, it'll, be, it'll uh, zoom in on it as if there are Anything to click on. A lot of it is uh, kind of picking stuff up as well. Uh, there'll be an item somewhere that you need to pick up uh, in order to uh, activate everything. But again, the whole point is to uh, to open the door and escape and get onto the next level. Uh, but I think I've clicked on everything at the moment and show, showing everybody around. Uh, but that is, can you escape? The second game that we're going to talk about this week is Pac-Man Dash. And as you can probably guess from the name of it, it's a Pac-Man game. So it's from Namco. And the other part of the name, Dash, kind of implies the other part of what the game is in the sense that it is a an infinite runner type game. But there are missions, so it's not infinite. Kind of. I'll show you when we get into the game. When we get into the game, it'll be, it'll be obvious as to why it's kind of a... Uh, a weird way around what the types of games are so there are different missions so that it is level based there are different missions and they're all you know based on eat ghosts and collecting the cookies and things like that and doing different things so this one's eat 10 red ghosts but the reason it is kind of an infinite runner as well is because there is a time limit and you can run for as long as you've got time and there are also ways to increase that time so if you collect ghosts um, you can increase the time if there's also like power-ups that you can collect which also increase the time so if you tap the go button we'll get going and as you collect the, the cookies or the, the dots as you know everybody used to call them um, Pac-Man speeds up so the more you collect the faster you go and the whole point is to obviously collect as many as you can uh, before the time runs out you start off with 30 seconds but like I said if you if you uh, pick up the ghosts if you eat the ghosts you add a couple of seconds to that to that timer so you can kind of get going a little bit more 
Um, in this one, the mission that I'm supposed to be doing is um, eating 10 ghosts, and you can see in the in the top left hand corner that I've gotten uh, 7 out of 10 so far, so hopefully I'll be able to get the other the other couple in uh, in the 12 seconds, 11 seconds that's left. Uh, but you can use the uh, the like dash power up that you can see in the bottom left hand corner as well to uh, collect some. We've got a couple more there, I'm going to need one more but I've not got much, there we go, mission completed. So that's the whole part of the game basically, you just go for as long as the timer will let you go, as long as you've got time left on the clock and then um, trying to the mission as well as trying to collect as many uh, as many cookies as you can in the time. So it's a very simple game, you can see how the infinite runner comes into it and also the mission based thing comes into it. Um, the only downside I would say, well, stop, tap the next mission, the only downside I would say to it is I think that it's a little, there's a little bit too much going on, on the screen at, at, at once. The ease of like infinite runner games is generally that they're a little bit simplistic. There's there's very rarely much on the screen, if anything, because all, all you're really doing is tapping the screen, and it's not much different here. I mean, you, you get in the the addition of um, like the, uh, the the dash move, the the sprint move when you when it's cooled down. So there is like extra little things to do, but it still seems a little bit too much on the screen. You get used to it really, so it's it's not it's not really. A problem it's just it, it kind of looks a bit messy it kind of looks a little bit too much on the screen sometimes which can get a little bit confusing but generally the, I mean the gameplay is quite fun it, it gets a little bit repetitive but the, the fact that I mean all infinite runners get a little bit repetitive the, the fact that there's missions involved gives a little bit of extra uh, reason to be to be carrying on playing uh, it's, it's quite a fun game in general though uh, it's, uh, like I said, there's plenty of stuff to do, plenty of collectibles to, to pick up, plenty of missions, all that all that good stuff. So uh, it's, it's it's worth a play, but it can get a little bit repetitive. But that is Pac-Man Dash. The third game that we're going to have a look at this week is Propel Man, and it's a free game, which is why you get the adverts. So I uh, expect to see those quite a little bit in this review, um, but we'll say no thanks. The whole point of the game is to basically go as far as you can, as you'd probably expect from a game called Propel Man. So uh, we'll have a look at the shop first. So you can upgrade your player, you can upgrade uh, basically anything about the game. You can upgrade how many coins you get. Rocket boosters are quite an important thing. One thing that I will say is it is a free game you will come to see the reliance on the rocket boosters which you need to buy from the start. You can collect them in game but due to the, the nature of the gameplay they're kind of difficult to collect in game. Um, so you probably find yourself buying them from the start more than you will being able to collect them in the game. But you can unlock, you can upgrade any part of your uh, uh, the game basically, the player, the parachute, the catapult, things like that. You can also earn coins by tapping the watch video in the bottom centre of the screen. Um, I've been earning 35 coins, something like that, per video. They're usually about 15 to 30 second videos, just adverts for other games really. So you don't have to buy um, coins, you can you can earn them by watching videos, but it all depends on how much time you've got, things like that. So we'll jump into the game. And the whole point of the game is you're giving up a, a, a catapult and a target distance at the top centre you can see how uh, how far you need to go. Uh, the catapult is how you need to get that far. So you tap and hold the screen in order to set the angle that you want the arm to go at. So we'll do that. The green area, the like the the hi highlighted green area, the one that's a bit a bit lighter, is the target area. So that's where you want it to go in order to get the furthest distance. So try and get the arrow in that area. That's quite good. And then you need to set the um, the power of the catapult in general. So tap and hold the screen again in order to set this the power. Again, it's you have to get the arrow into the uh, into the, the middle or as close as you can to the middle of the highlighted green area. And then basically it gets flinged into the air. And once you you can use the rocket to try and get a little bit further. Uh, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the distance. And on your way down, you got to tap. The parachute. Tap the screen again in order to deploy the parachute and not basically face plant the floor. So you get coins for doing that. You you progress to the next level. Obviously, the, the higher level you are, the more things you can unlock in the shop, the more things you can buy in the shop. 
uh, things like that. It's, it, you can use the the distance that you've travelled to to play against friends, things like that. So uh, there's, there's plenty of, of gameplay there. You can see in the top now, the top center, it says I've got five rockets left. That basically tells me how many rockets I've got. Uh, you may have seen while I was flying through the air some uh, rockets here in in the air. Uh, you can see how, because you can't uh, position yourself in the air, it's just basically where you happen to have thrown yourself through the air. Um, it's kind of difficult to uh, predict that you're going to be able to pick up a, uh, a rocket. So it's, it's pretty much dumb luck as to whether you pick up a rocket uh, while flying. Uh, but, you know, you, you can do sometimes. You don't always have to, uh, have to buy them, but probably find yourself buying them more often but that is propel man the fourth and final game that we're going to talk about this week on mobile monday is jurassic park builder and as the name suggests it's a management game where you were obviously have to build jurassic park or build your own version of jurassic park and it's pretty much the same as every other like management game that, that there is out there there was an et one a, a quite a while ago um there's been there's been other ones uh, all over the whole point is to build Jurassic Park. like i said um you obviously have dinosaurs you can collect you can see that there's a little uh, icon a little uh, coin icon above the triceratops that means it's got something that i can collect so i tap on him i collect the money uh you can see that I built a couple of, uh, of dinosaurs in this version of my park already. Um, let's have a look. Let's zoom out a little bit if we can. There we go. You can expand the park. You can tap on like areas of the jungle and expand. But obviously, as with these time management apps, I mean it's a free application. Uh, they want you to pay for uh, for, for the stacks of cash in order to speed things up. Um, so how long will this? If I if I want to speed that up, I need to spend uh, one like stack of cash. I don't, there's no real name for it in the, in the game. It's just I'm just calling it what it looks like a stack of cash. So we'll we'll speed that up and show what it's like. So you can see that it, once it's once that would have gotten to its natural end, it would have shown this anyway where I collect the experience, the level of uh, of my character, my my park. You can see in the top left hand corner. So collect that experience. And see if that's enough to uh, level up. It's nowhere near enough to level up. The other thing that you can do in uh, in the game, in fact, let me test this experience because I, I need to feed my dinosaurs, otherwise uh, things are going to happen that I don't really want to happen. So th these two uh, harbors, are the meat harbor and the uh, like the vegetation harbor, uh, I haven't got enough to uh, to activate that. I need to generate some more money. I've only got 29 of the uh, the in-game currency. Uh, so I can't activate the uh, the vegetable, like the vegetation, the herbivore uh, habit yet. But I've uh, I've got some meat, so I can uh, I can feed the Velociraptors and I can feed that, that one, Dilophosaurus. So I can I can feed them ones. Uh, but have I got anything? Uh, I've got I've got a little bit of uh, of vegetation. I can feed the Triceratops as well. Basically, it's very important to keep the uh, dinosaurs fed, as you probably would guess. So there's missions all uh, all, all through the uh, through the game as well. That's how you progress, how you, you uh, collect experience and level up. So I've, I've almost finished that one. I've only got six more meat to collect in order to uh, finish that. Uh, there we go. So mission complete, because I, uh, I collected the this, this more, more than six more. But so there's there's missions that you can do in the game. There's you obviously expanding the game. Uh, it, these uh, once you've cleared parts of the jungle away, you can, you get these like little grassy areas that you can clear up. And once you've um, cleared them, you get a chance to drop a piece of amber basically. And the piece of amber can be uh, used in the research facility. So I haven't got any any amber at the minute, but if I had amber, like if I waited for all these to get to the end, there's a chance that I collect some amber using the research facility, and you have the chance of discovering a new dinosaur, which you can then place using the uh, using the marketplace. So I've created all these ones so far. I can buy that using the the in-app purchasing currency, and the rest of them I have to find the amber for in order to research and uh, place them into the pack. But that's it's 
that's basically Jurassic Park Builder. You have to just build your own Jurassic Park. And that is Mobile Monday for this week.